In this video we are going to talk to take a look about uh, some more advanced functions of data manipulation in R like aggregation, mer merging two data sets and applying functions over a whole data set so a lot of these functions could be replaced by a by you by yourself just programming a looping structure on it but it probably would be much lower and complicated the the beauty of the R is exactly having so many uh, tools already built in for you already tested and very optimized to be fast so for instance the first comment that we're going to see is apply apply just applies a like the name says, apply is a function over a data set and of course you could do that with a, f a for uh, a loop but it's much faster if you do it with apply if you can make it run in an apply so there is many apply functions there is m apply, s apply, um, what else, t apply each of them is a, for a different usage but I, I will just talk about apply here so let's start by uh, getting our weather data data set and let me show you how apply works so I apply then the the uh, first parameter is the data set so I'm just selecting the three last columns which are the columns with the uh, well I can select one more actually the sixth one also uh, which are the columns that have numeric values right the second parameter, the, the value is true because true tells that I want this uh, function here applied to the to the lines, grouping by the lines, I mean the, the columns. If this value was 1, it would calculate by lines, but it doesn't make a lot of sense since our, our data is organized by columns, right? And here I select the function, I apply the function uh, mean. With, so these numbers are the mean of each of the columns I could use other functions here like sum for instance and then would be the sum or like length or uh, all of them have the same length but, uh, you, or you can use even functions that you yourself you built these functions need to be able to receive a, a vector, a numeric vector so let's take a look in the aggregate now Aggregate is very important for our project. First, I will uh, just convert this the, the data that we have in our data set to the correct data format. And then I will ask for the month. Remember that I told you that using the dollar symbol, you can extract just part of a date. For instance, uh, asking for the month. So we have here the month of the data set. So I will just create a new column with the month see here uh, uh, 0 is actually January this month just goes until 11 it's uh, like w one less it starts on 0 so and the aggregate comments work like that I'm sure it, it like groups uh, data with similar features and then apply a function on all of them so here I'm, I'm the first one is the data that I want to apply so I'm passing the te minimum temperature then I ask like by what I want this aggregated it, is ca it always has to be a list so you have to make it be a list and I ask the, the variable that I created the month right and then the function is length so here I have the the length of the number of measurements in each of the months of course length doesn't make a lot of sense let's say for instance max so here I have the maximum the maximum minimum temperature of each month but this is actually including two years so it's that that's why you have like 60 measurements here and so I the same thing of the apply you can ask for like the mean also so the mean for all the measurements of each month and you could have done the same for year. You just separate the date in years, and then you use aggregate for uh, making operations grouping by grouping by years. And okay, so let's now talk about the command merge. Uh, first, I will recreate my data set 
because I want to use the, um, the, the date as a grouping factor but it, it's better to group by a string by a character than by a date because if not well it gets a little complicated because the merge tries to sort it with a um, with a wrong function so l let's just like just believe me it's better to do that with numbers or characters instead of dates so I'm using the the the, the weather data before I converted the the date into a date format it's just still a character I'm going to divide my data in two data sets one with the temperature max and one of the temperature mean so so now it's two data sets what I'm going to use I'm going to use the merge command to merge these two data sets in one again uh, so th the merge command is really useful uh, when for instance you have many tables that refer to the same thing uh, I don't know like you have measurements of this measurement of that measurements of that and you want to create a single table with all the measurements but uh, that have the same day you know so you you merge them by day all these tables so how it's w it works it's the merge command the data set one the data set two the buy command is optional it's optional because it tries to merge by the same names in the data set it has to be a, a data frame can't be an uh, other kind of data and they have to have the one of the columns has to have the same name right like so here I'm merging by the date and so what I got is a single table um, merged can see of course this is just like reforming the table that we had before but it's 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 how it works so i can i can just omit this but it's usually good to 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 put the by here because if you don't have them a matching column here if you put the by here it w it's going to give you an error but if you don't put the by and you, ha you don't have any matching column here it it's going to just multiply the the both data sets so you have a, if your data set is already big you, you're going to to have a data set too big to fit in the memory it's just going to freeze because it's a multiplication of the both data sets since there is no matching it will just generate all the matches all the, the other values of the other data set for each value that you have in the first data set is a multiplication um, these comments they are very complex they have many options so I urge you to take a look in the help about them and uh, I will leave uh, more about it for the more advanced courses this is supposed to be basic right and I just wanted to show you w what is possible to do you know to, to instigate you to learn more about the language so um, th this is the last lecture that I'm going to that has uh, real content on it. In the next video, it's going to be I'm going to solve the project. I'm going to to show how how to make each of the propositions of the project. Uh, we have seen all the comments necessary for that. That I'm going to use in the co in the project. So I, it's good that you try to do the project before looking at this video. So you, you know, you face the problems by yourself and then then later on you can see how how it works uh, I hope I accomplished my objective with this with this course which is to give you a, a broad basic view of the language so you know what you expect and hopefully you will feel like really instigated to to learn more about it and so yeah that's it so see you in the next video about the project bye